Hey there, I wanted to say a few words about maternal health after one gives birth. So that's maternal physical and mental health following delivery or what we call the postpartum period. Um, I think there are a lot of things about that period that take people by surprise, both the woman who's just given birth and her partner. So let's talk a little bit about what you can expect. All right, so we hear a lot of people talk about baby blues, which baby blues is just a uh, hormonal response, right? So your, your hormones have been at a pretty steady level throughout your pregnancy. And then as soon as you deliver, as soon as that placenta is out of you, you do a bit of a nosedive. And that can feel a lot like PMS, like PMS extreme version. So what does that mean for the new mother? It means that she can feel extra vulnerable, extra weepy, emotional. Things that are said to her may just strike her the wrong way. She may feel that people are being critical of her or that she feels very alone, kind of like weirdly isolated, even though there's plenty of people around her you know, in all likelihood. This can start immediately, by the way, it can start in the hospital and then continue once you get home. But when a woman is well supported, when there are people around her doing things for her, making her meals, tending to her, helping her take care of the baby, working with her with breastfeeding or any other feeding challenges that may come along, um, the baby blues can be a little bit diminished by more support, okay? And then they just kind of go away on their own, just gradually over the first few weeks. So it's, for some people it happens sooner, for some it happens later. So I can't give you an exact time frame. But this often gets confused with postpartum depression or anxiety. So what we call mood disorders. And those are different it's not so much feeling like irritable and weepy, it's more like actual anxiety and feeling like, um, uh, you know, a sense of being truly overwhelmed and uh, maybe like extra heightened nervousness about the baby. All right, so I'll get back to that in a second. So, so first thing to expect are some baby blues, all right? Next thing, there's a lot of physical stuff that people don't talk about. Like women experience after they've given birth, hemorrhoids, urinary incontinence, night sweats or hot flashes. That's again due to the hormones because there's this big shift uh, in your hormones at that point. It's a little bit like menopause, unfortunately. Um, there's also a lot of vaginal bleeding. Now, they'll tell you about that in the hospital because they're like, okay, you have to wear pads and um, you can expect to bleed for a couple of weeks. And that is true. You will likely bleed for a couple of weeks. And that, that blood, lochia is what we call it, will taper off over those weeks. So it can go from being like more... Um, reddish going to more brownish as the as the weeks go by. You also can expect to see some clots and they will tell you in the hospital if you pass anything larger than a golf ball um, that you need to call your provider because that could be a sign that you're having uh, some kind of a um, an issue with like retained placenta or something like that. Okay, so that's something to expect. But let's talk about that a little bit more, the reality of that. Uh, one thing I tell all of my clients is that if you were bleeding and it was starting to taper off and then it picked up again, it's usually a sign that you did too much. And this happens a lot when people are like, all right, I got you know cabin fever, I wanna get out, I wanna take a walk, and they do too much. Or worse than that, it's not even cabin fever. They're just like, I have errands to do. I have shopping to do. I, I need to go out and you know get things done. And that's really not what you should be doing in the weeks following your birth. All right, so if you notice that the bleeding ramps up or gets more red, that's a sign that you're doing too much. Another mistake I see a lot of people do is they... Um, 
they put the baby in a carrier and they wear the baby before they're actually healed. So just remember this, it takes about two weeks for the uterus to go from being up in the abdomen to back down in the pelvis. And over those two weeks of healing, there's a lot of shedding. So that's the blood, the lochia, and it's clotty and viscous, sometimes mucousy. That's all normal, but it's, it's impacting you. Another thing women don't expect is the crampy feeling they get if they are breastfeeding. So the, so the act of breastfeeding triggers oxytocin, uh, which is going to contract your uterus. I mean, that's what it does in labor and that's what it does afterwards. So, so that's another thing to look forward to. <laughs> All right. So urinary incontinence, constipation, um, hot flashes, I said all of those. And then, so let's go back to the mood disorder piece. Um, so yeah, and, and you know, particularly partners, I'd like to kind of point this at you. If you're noticing that she's not herself, okay? <laughs> you know, you're just kind of noticing like an extra level of anxiety, worriedness, um, and possibly being depressed, which is not what we expect for a new mother that's not necessarily the sort of like demeanor that we're expecting, you know, it's, and, and it, you know, it takes people by surprise and people feel very upset about it, especially if they were like, they had a hard time getting pregnant or staying pregnant. And then they finally have this baby and they're like, wait, I thought I would feel more joyful and excited and so forth. So there are a lot of challenges in the first couple of weeks postpartum. Let's not forget that. You're learning how to feed your baby. There's a lot of crying, there's sleep deprivation, and all, and, and then you have all the hormonal things going on, and then you have the physical things going on. It kind of conspires to be a not great time period as it's kind of billed to be more of like this like time of like, you know, abject joy. So that's not usually what women feel. And I always want the people around, any support people around the new mother to really take that into consideration. She didn't just go to the hospital and have like a hangnail removed. She had an, an enormous physiological event. And if she had a C-section, she had major abdominal surgery. So just think about that for a second. If you had surgery, if you had like a hernia surgery or something, you'd be sent home from the hospital with with painkillers and you'd be just like sleeping in your bed, you know, watching Netflix and just kind of going in and out of slumber. She doesn't get to do that. And that's a lot of pressure. And not only does she not get to do that, but she's expected to engage in the often challenging endeavor of breastfeeding. So all of these things, the sleep deprivation, the newness of your life, the responsibility for this vulnerable creature that you have just been handed and kind of set on your way, um, you know, as you leave the hospital, it sometimes feels very overwhelming. So again, support persons should really endeavor to be supportive. That doesn't mean like coming over and saying, you know, um, oh, can I just hold the baby? That's easy. That's the, that's the icing on the cake. If you want to be really helpful, you ask the mother, what can I do for you? Do you want me to empty the dishwasher? Should I put a load of laundry in? Um, can I make you a meal? Do you want me to order in for you? Do you want me to make sure that your fridge is stocked? All the things that will make her life easier. That's what you're looking for. Okay.